Thank you and welcome to Synthigo's webinar, How to Interpret ICE Results. My name is Mike and I'm a technical support scientist at Synthigo. In this webinar, I will show you how you can interpret the Sanger sequence.av1 files you input into ICE for analysis. This webinar's purpose is to give you a general understanding of the results you will receive after analyzing your CRISPR edited samples using ICE. Here is what we will cover. First, we will cover each of the various components of ICE displayed after it processes your input files and sequences. These components will allow you to compare edited sequences to other edited sequences and the wild type. Additionally, you'll be able to analyze your CRISPR editing efficiency observed in the sequences. We will then transition to discussing what a knockout cell pool and a knockout cell clone analysis look like when uploaded to ICE. We'll finish by understanding what sets a knockout cell pool apart from a knockout cell clone. Remember that you can download a PDF copy of the full slide deck to follow along and take notes during this webinar journey. Let's get started. Using ICE, you can determine the types of edits that are present in your samples. For example, in knockout experiments, you could use ICE to analyze both your knockout cell pool and your knockout cell clones. The cell pool population will contain a percentage of cells with no edits, or wild type cells, and a percentage of cells containing a mixed amount of edits with varying zygosities. Knockout cell clones consist of a monoclonal population of cells containing the same knockout induced indel profile. In both examples, ICE is a great tool to assist with assessing how well your knockout or knock-in CRISPR edit experiments worked. The following slides will help you understand how to interpret the analyzed results ICE produced from the samples you have uploaded. The first screen after ICE analyzes the sequencing data from your samples will be the summary page seen here. You can see the list of all the samples that are uploaded to ICE below the bar graph. If you uploaded multiple samples, you can scroll through to find any given sample. As you place your mouse over a sample of interest, this will be highlighted in the bar graph above to display how that sample compares to other samples you uploaded. A double bar graph depicted is of the samples ICE was able to analyze. As you hover over each of the double bars in the graph, you'll be able to see which of the samples it corresponds to. The blue bar represents the indel percentage which is the percentage of the sequences that contain some type of CRISPR edit in that sample. The indel percent includes all detected sequences that are different from the wild type, that is all insertions and deletions present in the samples, and it gives a general indication of the editing efficiency. The editing efficiency can be impacted as well by how well the guides are delivered, how well the guides cut the DNA, and the favored repair pathway of that cell line. The green bar represents the knockout score. The knockout score is a metric of knockout efficiency determined by Synthigo's ICE's tool. The knockout score is defined as the percentage of sequences in a CRISPR edited sample that are frame shifting inducing indels and indels that are 21 nucleotides in length or larger and that lead to a putative knockout. The higher the knockout score, the higher the percentage of the sequences that are likely to result in a functional knockout of the edited target. The red bar is the knock-in score. This is the percentage of the sequences in the sample uploaded that contain the desired knock-in sequence. Lastly, you can also find the model fit or R-squared value for each of your samples. The R-squared value is how well the proposed indel distribution fits the Sanger sequence data of the edited sample. It should be noted that if you are doing a knockout experiment, you will only see a blue and green bar representing the indel percentage and knockout score. If you are doing a knock-in experiment, 
you will see the blue and red bar depicting the indel percentage and the knock-in score. To further analyze how efficient your CRISPR edits are, you can click on one of the samples in the bottom window of the summary screen. After you click on one of the samples, the next page will contain three different tabs with fruitful amount of information to understand your CRISPR edited sample. The first tab on the screen will be the contributions tab. Here is where you will be able to see the sequences present in your samples and their representations. For each sequence in the population, the number of nucleotides inserted or deleted is indicated in the indel column. The percentage that is shown to the right denotes the contributions of that sequence to the total amount of sequencing reads. The black vertical dotted line represents the cut site. An orange plus symbol on the far left marks the unedited control per wild type sequence. Above where the sequences are located, you can find additional enlightening analysis information. Underneath status, your sample should say succeeded in green, indicating that I successfully analyzed your input data. When your status is not green, you will receive either succeeded in orange or failed in red. When you hover your mouse over the succeeded in orange, you'll be able to see a message stating why the ICE results are suboptimal and those ICE results should not be trusted. If ICE says your results have failed in red, it means ICE was not able to interpret your input variables and sample. For either status reading succeeded in orange or failed in red, you should look out for the error message type and consider watching one of the ICE troubleshooting webinars to help you troubleshoot your analysis. Underneath the guide target, you will find the guide sequence you uploaded to ICE indicating where the cut site should be located. If you transfect with multiple guides similar to our gene knockout kits and you uploaded all of the sequences to ICE, you will see all of the guides listed here. Next to the guide sequence, you can find the PAM sequence. The protospacer adjacent motif, or PAM, is a sequence ICE identified as the target site your Cas nuclease found to initiate nucleic acid cleavage. Also on this tab, you can see the indel percentage, which should be the same as the indel percent from the previous page. Following the indel percent is the model fit, or R-squared, of this sample analysis. The R-squared represents how well the indel distribution fits the Sanger sequence data of the edited sample and has a maximum value of 1. It sets the maximum for the indel percentage, knockout score, and knock-in scores. Additionally, the sum of all contributing sequences will add up to the R-squared value. As you can see in this example, the R-squared value is 0.99. This means 1% of the sequences did not fit the model and 99% of the sequences were successfully analyzed. Of this 99%, 97% were edited as reflected in the indel percent and only 2% are the wild type. Finally, we generally recommend an R-squared value of 0.8 as a soft cutoff for an acceptable ICE analysis. For more detailed knock-in and knock-out analysis, please see our walkthrough of ICE knock-out analysis and walkthrough of ICE knock-in analysis webinars. Please note, all of the parameters mentioned above will still be present as you scroll through the indel distributions and traces tab. As you click on the middle tab called the indel distribution, you will find two distinct plots present. The plot on the left, known as the indel plot, displays the inference of distributions of the all edits in the population. You can hover over each of the blue bars to display the edit and the percentage of the sequences containing that specific edit. The percentages of different indel sizes in the cell population are not the same as the nice knockout score. Each indel size represented in the indel plot may not necessarily occur in the same sequence. The plot on the right is called the discordance plot, which displays the level of alignment between the wild type or control, seen in orange, and the edited sequence, seen in green, around the region of the cut site. 
it is representing the average signal that disagrees with the reference sequence. On the plot, the green line and the orange line should be close together before the cut site. This region should be long enough to allow the Sanger sequence to stabilize and allow ice to align both sequences. As you can see here, both the editing and control are noisy in the beginning, but eventually align together with a typical CRISPR edit resulting in a jump in discordance near the cut site. The sequences will be then continue to remain far apart after the cut site representing a high level of sequence discordance. The final tab of the ICE analysis is called the traces tab. This tab depicts a beautified version of the Sanger sequence files you uploaded to ICE. To fully understand your edits and to make sure that ICE did not miss a peak signal, it is recommended to take a look at the raw sequence data as well to make sure there is an agreement with ICE. These sequences that you see are the .av1 Sanger sequence files that you uploaded initially. The edited sequences will be seen on the top and the control or wild type will be located on the bottom. The horizontal black underlined region represents the guide sequence. The horizontal red underline is the PAM site. The vertical black dotted line represents the actual cut site. Cutting and error prone repair usually result in mixed signals being detected representing the bases of the sequences after the cut site. As mentioned in previous slides, you can determine the types of edits that are present in your samples for both knockout and knock-in samples. ICE also has the ability to assist with your assessment of your cell pool and cell clones. In the next part of this webinar, we will discuss the differences between what a knockout cell pool and knockout cell clone look like now that you have a better understanding of the interface of ICE and its analyzing capabilities. Seen here is an example of what a knockout cell pool profile looks like. You will have different types of edits present in your knockout pool sample compared to the wild type. The wild type sequence present in your knockout pool will be noted by the orange plus sign. Based on the contributions of each of the sequences, you will be able to see which edits are of higher frequency within the population of cells. Knowing which edits are most frequent and the nature of these edits will help you estimate the number of clones you will need to screen to identify a positive clone. The higher the editing efficiency, the lower number of clones you will need to screen. The higher the knockout score, the higher the probability of generating a functional knockout. For instance, this example has an editing efficiency of 97% and the knockout score is 89%, with the major contribution being a minus two indel found at 68% of the sequences. In this case, it should take only a handful of screen clones to identify a positive clone with a functional knockout. However, after genotyping your knockout cell pool and before going into clone isolation, we recommend assessing protein expression in your knockout cell pool by Western blot or any other protein detection methods to determine if there is indeed a functional knockout. When submitting your clones to ICE for analysis, ICE will have the ability to assist with determining the zygosity as long as you are certain your clones come from a single cell. On top, you can see a homozygous knockout clone that contains close to 100% contribution of a single type of edit. On the bottom, you can see a compound heterozygous knockout clone for a diploid cell line where there are two different types of edits, one in each allele, and each contributing at or close to 50% of the sequences detected. In this particular case of a diploid compound heterozygous clone, one of the alleles contains an edit that is a minus three as seen here. ICE analysis shows an indel percentage of 95, but a knockout score close to 50% because this edit being a multiple of three does not introduce a frame shift and hence is not counted towards the knockout score. As 
as a summary, ICE has the capability to help you identify the types of edits found in your cell pool and helps assess which edits are most likely to generate a functional knockout. The cells containing the edits most likely to generate a functional knockout are the cells you would want to select for when isolating clones. ICE can also assist with your analysis of knockout cell clones. Knockout cell clones consist of a monoclonal population of cells containing the same knockout-induced indel profile. For example, if your cell line of interest is diploid and your ICE analysis has an R squared of 1, a homozygous knockout clone will have an indel percent close to or at 100%. Under the same ICE R squared conditions, if you were to have a heterozygous clone with one allele edited and one allele being the wild type, you would expect an indel percent at or close to 50%. Lastly, if you were to have a compound heterozygous clone under the same R-squared conditions where both alleles are edited but the edits are different, you will have an indel percent at or close to 100%. Utilizing ICE to analyze your CRISPR edits can be beneficial for you because of its abilities to aid with your assessments of how well your CRISPR edit experiments worked. If you would like additional resources of ICE, how to analyze results, and other webinars, feel free to glance over all of these links to help you further. All of our resources are freely available on our website and are great tools to help you get started with your experiments. Here at Synthigo, we would like to help you with your CRISPR needs anytime. Please feel free to reach out to us and we would be happy to help you out. I would like to thank you for your time and please visit our help center and website at www.synthigo.com for more information.